the riding to show you and some very exciting races. So fasten your seatbelts everyone. Surfers Paradise was chosen as the location for this year's Australian BMX titles, which are traditionally held over the Easter long weekend. For most visitors to the Gold Coast, relaxing on a quiet beach would be quite sufficient. But for the BMXers and their families, enjoyment came from a different source. Speed, endurance, skill and a desire to win. <laughs> Every person who entered the Australian Championships had a chance to win their age race title. It was an open event and a staggering number of contestants, 1,770, travelled from all over Australia to race in the hope of winning an Australian number one plate for the front of their bike. All eyes, of course, were on last year's winners in each age group. Would they have improved or changed their technique, so eagerly copied by other riders? Would they have trained enough in the gym and on the track? Would an injury in the trials put them out of the finals? Or would they make a mistake in the last vital race? Jamie Hales, a champion of his age group two years running, was this year hoping to hold the title in the boys' 17 and over race. Wayne McIntosh was one of his chief rivals, and like other competitors, had been at Ashmore for a week before the event getting used to the track. When you first see a track, you kind of just work it out and like ride around a few times slow and stuff, and just basically get the feel of it, but when you're racing one track, like, the jumps are you know, varying sizes and stuff. It's just a matter of getting timing the jumps right and stuff. And so you like a fast track, do you? Yeah, I like a fast track because, like, I, I'm a powerful rider. I can run high gears and like a lot of the other guys. And like, I can't spin a gear on like a tight, short track. Is this a difficult track? It is a quite difficult track because you're going so fast. Like the other tracks, you're only hitting them, the jumps and stuff like about half pace to, compared to this. But this is really fast, you know. The younger competitors were finding the track difficult, even in their practice sessions, a point which was noted by Jamie Hales in his track assessment. It's because of the downhill first straight, they're not used to going that fast, usually on a flat track they'd be doing half the speed they're doing and they're going a lot faster than they normally do and they, you know, they probably get wheel wobbles or you know, just the, the greater speed they can't handle the jumps going that much faster. The first thing you come to, you can either go over a hill or around the side. I've never seen that on a track before. I think it's basically because um, the first turn is a switchback where it's got a left-hander and a right-hander. If they didn't have that, that thing in the, in the first turn, people would sort of go straight through the turn without making turns like that. Right. They'd sort of shoot straight through, so they, they've built up the inside of the first turn and the left and the left-hand side just a little bit to split them up, so you either go on the left or the right. Yeah. Usually most guys tend to go on the left because it's a bit faster. What about the there's two sort of humps at the end here, or yeah, the on the last jump. stretch, yeah, the double jumps. That's where everyone's coming off. Yeah. Well, uh, double jumps are really hard to take, especially these set are pretty hard. They've got two tiny, two small double jumps, and then they've got these two really pointy ones that are pretty close, like they're only a metre apart. And if you, like, don't clear it, um, you know, you don't clear it enough, you're gonna, your front wheel comes in and hits this one and it just flips you over the bars, you know, it's about a six-foot drop. And if you clear it by too much, you know, you go flying down, you land on the flat, you buckle your rims and stuff, and you can always get uncoordinated and fall off and stuff. So it's, it takes a lot of practice to get over things like that. Gearing up was the first priority for the trials. No one was allowed to ride the track without the full safety gear prescribed by the BMX associations.
the five-year-old girls rode the first race of the titles. They had a predictable number of spills. But for many, the thrill of the race was to ride and to finish. Winning was secondary. BMX competitors attracted about 7,000 spectators to the track on the two days of racing, a large number of whom were parents actively involved in supporting their kids in BMX. Maintenance was carried out trackside under a sea of blue awnings and gearing was changed and rechanged to suit the conditions of the track. Maintenance rules in BMX clubs are strict for safety reasons, according to one father that we found busily working away in his portable workshop in the middle of Tent City. It's essential before any of the racing for the kids. Well, the kids give their, their best in speed and ability, uh, so the bikes have to be maintained to the best of their mechanics or their ability, starting from the front of the bike, tyre pressures, all the spokes, the hubs, the axle nuts, right through the headsets, gooseneck clamps to the handlebars to stop the handlebars moving, uh, grips not slipping off handlebars, chains adjusted properly so they don't fall off, and same system to the front wheelers to the back, axles, spokes and so forth. And that was very essential for the racing kids on the track, because they, as I say, they give their best, they go as fast as they can go, so the bike has to be maintained to the utmost. The trials proceeded at a torturously fast pace all the way through the first day, with one race being run every minute from 8am to 5pm. It's heat 12, heat 12, they're off the gate and they're running, have a look at them go, the wide man on the outside is Luke Krebs, and he's cut right in and got... To get to the finals, each competitor had to ride in four motos each. But for a while, it looked as if the side hacks mightn't get to race at all. What we're doing is, uh, there's been a rule laid down by the Australian BMX Association which says all side hacks must conform to one metre width. From there, the outer extremity of the axle, right? right. Now, a lot of the, uh, the riders, unfortunately, don't understand the rules, or the association in the state don't understand the rules properly, and because it's the, the rules been missed, they've been measuring it from the pedal to the axle. The situation is that this uh, side hack was passed in New South Wales under the interpretation of the rule by the New South Wales Association, and uh, is consequently now not passed under the Australian. So your kids can't ride today. Oh, they cannot. Again. They cannot ride this particular machine. No. Well, but you had it built in New South Wales, didn't you? You didn't even knock it up yourself. So yeah. you had it built to the specifications. Yeah, it's been built by a professional engineering firm. So are you upset about the decision? Well, I'm upset in terms of it, I believe, is parental politics ruining what should be a fun sport for kids. The decision was made by the parents or the delegates of the associations, and the kids really had no say in it. You know, you, you've got a rule book printed, so everything is running to conformity. So what do you do? Do you bend the rule for three, which I tried, yeah. or do you go by the vote which says run by the rules? There is one who wanted it to run by the rules, opened up his workshop for every one of these kids yeah. to have, and he will work all night to have these kids' bikes ready. Well, that's something. Yeah. You know, at least there's some sort of compromise. There are other kids who are swapping hacks to make sure that they can ride. 
So you'll find that every one of those kids that have had their nose put out because of the decision mm. are still riding the title. After the tempers cooled and the parents stopped shouting at each other, the side hacks did get to race, but only those which had been modified to the new specifications. Riders ready! Panel set! The dispute, however, had not stopped the relentless trials, nor had it stopped Jamie Hales and Wayne McIntosh in their pursuit of their goals. As Jamie told me on the afternoon of the trials, every moto was teaching him something new about the track. Riders ready! Panel set! Yeah, it's a pretty good track. The only thing, um, because the first straight's so long and so fast, like, um, the, the guys that aren't as fast as the more experienced riders can keep up. Like, usually if, we, if you had a, um, a race track where the first straight was flat, the better riders would get out, get out of the gate quicker and get down the first straight faster because you've got stronger legs. But down on a da downhill, for, you know, starting straight, usually the, the slower guys can keep up with you a lot better. But we find better, the experienced riders find when they get around the second half of the track, they can usually, you know, pass them again if they ever get in front because it's a lot more skill to get around the second half of the track than just the first half. Day two, Easter Sunday, and the finals were due to start at 3 p.m. All day, hundreds of kids queued, started, and rode the track. One point that bothered me enormously during the trials and the finals alike was the number of accidents that occurred on the track. Certainly there was no roar of engines, screech of wheels or pulverising of bodies, but injuries can and do take place in BMX riding. It's something that kids and parents should be aware of as a potential danger in the sport. you're having to cope with today? Oh, not very uh, serious ones. Most of them need tender loving care. You know, when we get up to the bigger boys, they are going much faster, of course, and they get more serious injuries. Um, but we are trying to uh, influence the, the people who run this organisation to uh, to go in for gut belts because they, the steering wheel, when they come off, the steering wheel flies round, hits them in the stomach and can cause permanent damage and we're trying to press them to, to wear a gut belt to protect them from this. Does it worry you that your little girl got hurt? No, it doesn't worry me, but I don't like them getting hurt. But um, she enjoys the sport, so... But she hasn't been hurt at all over the years that she's been riding? She's only been riding for six months. So. Can you stand on the sideline though getting really nervous for her? Is it important that she wins? Do you? She wants to enjoy it, that's the whole idea. 3pm and the riders were raring to go on their final runs. Uh, I remember last year that really exciting race when you became the Australian champion. Do you think you're going to be able to do it again? Well, I'm going to try my best. Um, the sport is really, really cutthroat. Like, it come down to an eight-man gate, 
and like first round wins so you never know you just gotta I just try my best and hopefully I come out on top. There is a bit of a whisper around that Macca might take it out this year what do you reckon? Yeah that's the same he says that every year he says I'm gonna take it out. every race we go to that's big Wayne always says I'm gonna take it out but um but he's looking really determined this year. Oh yeah well you know it's so okay you can you never know like any, anything can happen it's so cutthroat. Jamie wasn't to know how ironic this prediction was to be in his final. Wayne was also confident. I feel I'm real confident. Really confident? Yeah. It's funny because Jamie said the same thing. You know, he's out to beat you. Yeah, well, he's going to have to catch me first. I can't wait for this. Well, good luck. <laughs> the girls went first in a series of exciting final races, made even more trying by the wet conditions which occurred at the last moment. We've got a couple of going back. Can't act quickly to him. We've got a front there. IG, I'll tell you what, you can pick them out of the files. They're all going round and one. It looks like Renee McKee for Queensland. She's out there in front at the moment. Particularly Britain's out there also with young Brooke Donnelly. We've got Amy Holmes in there with Melissa Jeffers. Renee Selby doing well with Lene Skill. They go down the Coca-Cola into the drop off now. The crowd's doing well as they come around to the sweeper. And we've got in front, there's still 46. Renee McKee from Queensland. She's out in front now. It's Renee McKee and here she comes now. Amy Holmes in second place from New South Wales. It's Renee McKee and Amy Holmes from number 97. Brooke Donnelly in third place. It's number 96. Moved up in the fourth. That's Tiggy Lee Britain. And here they go around the corner now. It's Renee McKee. She's still out in front there. She's only going to hang in there to go across that line. They set sail for home. It's Renee McKee. She'll take it out and take the Queensland. It's a good Queensland. We're picking her up and go to Queensland. Renee McKee in first. Hey, Renee, you're the number one five year old in Australia. How does it feel? Good. Did you, did you have a good ride? Was it um, very tricky on the track? Did you think you were going to fall over at all? Well, Taylor, you're the 10-year-old champion. Was it a harder race than the New South Wales titles? Yeah. In what way? Because it was slippery and on head. A lot of people just race. Were they, were they better, were they? Were they harder than the New South Wales ones? They're harder than the New South Wales ones. 13-year-old girls. Right the way they go at number 84, got a pretty good start set at number 14 on the inside. 14 is Karen Hurley from New South Wales, got the running at the moment. That's Karen Hurley and uh, Tracy Kozakowski back down about third spot at the moment, heading through the, heading through the S's and down through Coca-Cola. We'll pick them up as they come out. But it's uh, number 14, Karen Hurley. No, sorry, 84, Tracy Kozakowski. Tracy Kozakowski up front, Karen Hurley back in second place. Then number 72 is Linda Tempo. Then we've got Karen uh, Hurley back in about fourth or fifth spot at the moment. And number 11, Linda Ward, who put the bike down. Coming up the straight now, it's uh, number 84, Tracy Kozakowski. Then we've got Paul Ingram, two girls put the bike down, right on the finish line almost. Number 21, we'll get in for third, Karen Okay, and away they go, a good even start. As a matter of fact, Leanne Casper got out pretty fast, started for Lee Williams for Victoria. That's the two out in front of the moment. Hello, we've lost one, two, no, three have got tangled up. God, these bad luck for those girls, but never mind. Back towards the race leaders, down through the top of the car. Hello, we've lost Leanne Casper, I think. No, it wasn't Leanne. She's still got a nose out in front. It was one of the other girls. I think it was uh, the other little rider, Paul Lee Williams, that dropped off the back there, but Leanne Casper's out in front. Trio's up on a hammer. That's Big Mitty on out there, I can see. Paul Lee Williams, Victoria, banging about third spot. That's the way they go, down across the top of the car. Up to the final sweeper, into the big sweeper now, no doubt. Come on, give her a round of applause. Leanne Chester, number two, New South Wales, cops the big one for Australia. Right, the guy drops it off and right, but get away from it on east side by 73. It's Lake off by the Queensland, absolutely strong. The on the road of England, it's just Queensland up there. Here comes the Northern Territory, takes the right throw. And it's McDonald up going through, but it's Lancaster. He's shining the way. In towards the Lancaster himself. He goes out towards the Coca Cola corner. He comes into turn number one, comes away from it, turn number two in a brilliant line. Goes in towards the straight away. He's to the McMaster. Thank you very much, Stable Top. Goes on with the business now. But I tell you what, it's 73, Queensland out in front. Back number 14 is the Donald Nelson. 
Shepparton, all the way from Victoria, a thousand miles we've come and we've taken number one home. Oh, he fought hard for it, he came from behind. Just so proud for Shepparton. The 13th was a really exciting race. Did you think you were going to win? Well, not really, but but I blew the start by heaps, so, you know, I got out of the first jump pretty quick, but as soon as I got around the boom, well, I thought, oh yeah, I'm out in front, so I just kept on going. When, when I looked back, everybody was off the ground, just the way the place <laughs> they were. The yeah. <laughs> Getting away smartly, Johnny Harris from the split and CW gear. Edson going down on the first corner, being tackled here. Rawson up smartly, Wilson in there as well. Now, jump and Johnny Harris, national 14 year old champion last year, going for second year in a row, 15 year old plate. Works to the back side of the course, coming up to Master Meets. A real metro motivator. It's Johnny Harris up into the top corner. Runs down, got run over by three riders. Okay, they continue down the bottom corner, being tackled as they head down to the bottom corner. Hicks running in second place. Then starting to put the pressure on as well, but here he comes, New South Wales Riders, that's Johnny Harris first. It's getting up for second place, and Whitmore Robinson, all of them very close together. Green flag. They've gone in the National 17 year old, and Brooks has got it a little bit, but how to do it? Just so they close it. The boat is looking for the goal, and Mackintosh is going through the inside. Mackintosh is going to clear it up, and Mackintosh is going to clear it up. Boy, Macca, did you have bad luck? Yeah. What happened? Oh, I was just a bit slippery under the conditions. I think it was pretty hard, but I think if everyone kept their elbows in, it'd be a lot easier to do in the wet, though. It was a bit rough, but. Was it? Yeah. Just, uh, that's the way it goes, though. You're out with the big boys, aren't you? Yeah. They're all out to win. Probably just someone up there doesn't want me to have a number one plate. That's yeah, but, you know, Jamie's had it three years in a row. What are you going to do about it? I don't know what Jamie does to do it all the time, but he must have someone up there. <laughs> I just think it was such bad luck, because yeah. on the dry track you were going so yeah. well. I was going real good, but you can't win them all, I suppose. 
but Jamie's luck had run out. Two of his competitors protested against his ride and he was disqualified on the stewards' decision. Jamie, I just can't believe it. I mean, you win that race. It was such a hard race and then they disqualify you. Why? Um, they said I, I crossed lanes when I came out of the gate. I came out of the gate, I got a really, really good start and I couldn't see anyone on my left, so I just moved across and I didn't really, like, they got a 10 metre mark on the track where well, you're not supposed to cross before that and, you know, you, can't, you don't really look for it when you're racing, so I just went out and moved over because I was, I had way outside lane and because it's a left-hand turn and I was on the right-hand side of the track, you got to sort of angle across. Do you think you did do it? Why? Because, I mean, you're not a new boy, you're, I mean, you're Australian champion two years yeah. in a row. Well, um, well, I definitely crossed over, but I don't think I crossed anywhere near the 10 metre mark. Right. Did you see Macca hit the dust? <laughs> I was too busy out in front trying to win. I know, you must be so disappointed. When are you going to race again? Uh, not for a couple of weeks. I'm going to rest for a couple of weeks and then we'll see what happens. A bitter blow for a rider who'd been champion for two years running. The race had not been rerun, nor was there any defence allowed. The champion title then went to the second place getter, Darren Miller. What an exciting event. I just loved it. Well, I think that's the last of our BMX for this year. Next year's national titles are being held in Perth, and we hope to cover those for you too. And next week, Jam Sandwich looks at some weird and wacky types of things you can get up to of an artistic nature. So I hope to see you then. But now to take us out for this, of the show, here is a roundup of some good memories of an Easter spent with the BMXs.